Instant feedback mode for the DevExpress Silverlight data grid control is similar in concept with the server mode in that data is retrieved only in portions that are required to populate the view and data aware operations are performed on the server. Instant feedback mode is, however, an asynchronous server mode. The difference lies in how the grid behaves when data is retrieved and populated. When a user scrolls through the records in server mode, the grid first waits for partial data to be fetched before populating rows. Depending on data source performance, the volume of data being retrieved, and network connectivity, the user may experience UI locking. Instant feedback mode addresses this issue by continuing to respond to the user's actions while the data is being retrieved. The user can continue to scroll through records and even resort, regroup, and refilter the control's data. If required, the control will cancel the previous requests and initiate a new request to the data source. To provide visual feedback, Instant Feedback Binding Mode also includes options to display an animation indicating the status of operations within the grid. Instant Feedback Mode can be used with WCF RIA services and WCF Data Services or OData. In this video, we'll take a look at how to implement Instant Feedback Mode in the DX Grid Control. So let's get started. I'll start with a new instance of Visual Studio. From the Start page, I click the New Project link. Here, I'll select Silverlight and click on the Silverlight application template. Let's give it an appropriate name and click OK to create the project. Next, I'm presented with the new Silverlight application window. I'll leave the first item checked so that a new website project is created to host the Silverlight application. I check the Enable WCF RIA Services box so I can use the Entities Framework to bind to a SQL Server database. I click OK and the projects are created and populated accordingly. Now to set up the data source, I will need to start by adding an Entities Data Model. So I select the ASP.NET Application Project and right-click to add a new item to the project. I switch to the Data Template category and select the ADO.NET Entity Data Model. I specify a proper name for it and add it to the project. Next, I'm presented with the Entity Data Model Wizard. I'll specify that the model should be created from an existing database and click Next. I'll use an existing connection string from my local instance of SQL Server. Let's keep the connection string name as is and continue. I click Next and select the entire tables category to be used for populating the Silverlight grid with data. I click Finish, and the entity data model is created and displayed inside Visual Studio. I'll save and rebuild the solution. This is required so that the data entities become available for use throughout the project. Now I need to add a domain service class to provide data via WCF RIA services. To do this, I'll invoke the Add New Item window for the web project and select the Domain Service Class item. Let's give it an appropriate name and add it to the project. I'm presented with the new Domain Service Class window where I need to specify which entities model to use for data. I'll use the only available data context and select the entities model for the sample database. I click OK and the domain service class is created and displayed in the IDE. I'll rebuild the solution and close the class file to switch to the Silverlight Designer. From the toolbox, I expand the DevExpress data category and drag and drop a RIA Instant Feedback Data Source component onto the page. From the data group, I'll set the domain context and query name properties of the component. These items in these selections were auto-generated when we created the entities and the domain service class. Next, I'll drop a new DevExpress Silverlight Grid Control onto the page. I'll set it to fill the entire available area. From the Properties pane, 
I select the grid's item source property and click to apply a data binding to it. You can see that I can now select the item that will supply data to the grid. I select the element name category and click on the RIA instant feedback data source component that was added earlier. Then I'll switch over and specify the data path of the component. And that's it. Let's run the application to see the result. Here it is. The Silverlight grid control has been populated with data. I'll right click and adjust the size of all the column headers. By looking at the ID column, you can see that there are a total of 100,000 rows supplied by the data source. I'll add two more summary values for the sent column to demonstrate the speed at which the values are retrieved and displayed. Now let's group the data by the from column. You can see how quickly grouping is applied and how fast a group is expanded to show its data. Now let's add a group summary value to the group headers to see the total number of rows within each group. You can see that these values are also quickly calculated and displayed within the group header rows. Filtering is also lightning fast with the instant feedback server mode. I can invoke the filter menu and instantly apply a filter condition based on a selection from the subject column. And you'll notice the asynchronous nature of this data binding mode when I scroll up or down, the data is retrieved on demand to populate the current view of the grid. Thanks for watching. Let's see what develops.